can you divorce a person's moral character and behavior from the wisdom and trustworthiness of their words? Well, the answer that the Word of God has is no. We're in Proverbs, we're working through them in our daily devotions, and we're in chapter 12, and we pick it up at verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are just, but guidance from the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked are a deadly ambush, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and perish, but the house of the righteous will stand. A man is praised for his insight, but a twisted mind is despised. There are a bunch of proverbs about how character and your words uh, all go together. And so if one is bad, then the others will be bad. And as we listen to others, who they are and their words to us cannot be divorced from each other. Yes, someone can be a really smart mathematician or have some interesting political insight and so on, but their heart and their character will overflow into their leadership decisions, into the, the way they affect the people around them. And so we're called on here to be wise, to be wise. The thoughts of the righteous, we're told, are just, but guidance from the wicked is deceitful. That is, the person who may be talking up in leadership their, their, uh, their great plans and so on, if they're living a private lie, whether it's in a church or in a nation or in a business even, it'll be self-serving. It won't be for the good of people, uh, no matter how clever the mechanics and the maths may work out. Uh, they will be deceitful. It comes from a character within. James chapter 3 talks about how the mouth always uh, pours forth. It's the overflow of the heart. And here we see the Old Testament saying exactly the same thing, that who people are in their character comes out of their mouth. And well, you know, if they're wicked and they want evil ends, well, it's going to lead to them deceiving people. Whereas, on the other hand, uh, the wicked are overthrown. Sorry, the words of the wicked are a deadly ambush, but the speech of the upright rescues them. There's a way of speaking to others because of the character, the good character of your heart that's transformed by the Lord Jesus. That actually is good, good for you and good for others. And that as we look at other people in leadership, they might not necessarily be the smartest all the time but of good character and so is who you elect into government and leadership who you appoint as a, a, a church leader uh, at whatever level it might happen to be character really really matters uh, you see that in the selection of elders uh, in 1 timothy chapter 3 for instance that their character um, has to be good for their words to be useful and edifying and build up and point to the Lord Jesus Christ. When words and character don't match, it's we call it hypocrisy. But actually, in, in the end, it, it, there's worse than that because uh, the, the words coming from the heart of unrighteous will actually lead people astray into error and lies as people puff themselves up, build themselves up, they seek self-seeking, deceive and are deceived by others. We're continually warned that the character of false teachers uh, is a good way of spotting that their message is going to be wrong and evil and misleading and lead away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so who you are matters. When a leader stuffs up in the church, something should be done, right? It should be publicly exposed because it's actually going to say something about the character of all their messages and teaching and leadership up until this point as well. But also you want to protect others into the future. But we're being told here again for ourselves um, to uh, not only be wise about how we think about others and whose advice we take and whose leadership, um, but uh, also for ourselves that the overflow of the heart is going to come out of our mouth. And so build the good character, grow in your relationship with God, and you think about the impact of wisdom and righteousness and goodness that you'll have on other people. It's not to be overlooked. And you see the long-term results, as he says, the wicked are overthrown and perish, 
but the house of the righteous will stand. I think these things also apply in terms of the, the friends that we cultivate and who we run to for advice about our family, uh, you know, ups and downs and disasters and troubles and so on. Uh, the person who hasn't got their heart sorted out with God is not going to offer as good advice as uh, the wise, godly, mature Christian who uh, is going to be able to speak out of love for you, who's going to be able to rebuke you and correct you when you need to hear that, even if you don't like it. Whereas the, the heart of your friend who doesn't know the Lord Jesus, who's stuffed up in their own life, is not going to honour Jesus. They're going to uh, advise you to go after their own folly. Uh, but they're also going to say things that your itching ears want to hear. That's the danger, isn't it, of, um, of only going to people we like. And, and so when we start to admire those in society or in our community and around about us, uh, whose, whose words and actions are not pleasing to the Lord, it leads our hearts astray. And so be careful whose words you listen to. Uh, think about their character. Uh, we're told to be discerning in this area, as we're told all through the scripture, discerning. You'll know a, a, a tree by its fruit. Uh, and that tree, if it, you see it's a bad tree, they're not words to listen to. They're not words to appoint over you. They're not, uh, they're not the people around you that you want to cultivate their wisdom. We certainly want to not break relationships. We want to bring the Lord Jesus Christ to people uh, so that they can be forgiven and restored and be transformed inwardly for their sake, for everyone else's sake, but also for the glory of God. But be careful whose advice you take. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the wisdom of Solomon that you gave him and that he's passed on to us. And we pray, please, that we would be very, very discerning when we're seeking life advice, when we're appointing leaders. We pray when there are false teachers in the church whose lives don't match up with their words that they would be exposed. We pray uh, in terms of who our who we elect as local and state and government leaders or in other areas of life, please, that uh, we wouldn't disconnect their life from uh, their words and what they're going to be promoting. Help us to see when there are people out of step with you in their life um, to be wise enough not to listen. Father, we pray that you would protect us Please help us as we grow in Christ-like character to have words that are bring blessing and rescue and health and life and point to the Lord Jesus. Give us wisdom for ourselves, but also that we might encourage and help others. Help us to shine like stars in the dark night, to hold out your word of life, to be salt and light in this world. We pray for your Son's name and glory, uh, and we pray, please, for our protection. Uh, and Lord, be with us in all of these things. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Catch you for church in, on Sunday. Hopefully, you can be there in person, but we'll also be streaming online. Uh, and uh, catch you for another devotion on Monday. God bless. <laughs>